Welcome to First Down Sports, everybody. This is our FDS NFL edition. Sneak peek number two. Sneak peek number two. Sneak peek number two. This is uh, our little sneak peeks into our regular season coming up. We came up with a little conversation piece, and then I'm going to hit you a little with a little bonus one at the end of this. But today's challenge is to come up with our top three picks or top three power rankings yeah. for the AFC and NFC conferences. Yeah. I found this very challenging. Mm-hmm. Not so much the AFC, but the NFC was a big challenge for me to come up with three. Yeah, that third team in the NFC was a big challenge for me too. So we'll see if we, uh, I, I mean, clearly we're going to upset a lot of people with these picks. There are some people, uh, you know, that, that that follow us either on social media or part of our groups and conversations that are probably not going to agree with anything we say. Probably That's not. par for the course. I know one thing they're going to agree with us on, and it's pretty hard to argue this. Let's get it started in the AFC. Right. And the first seed overall is Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Mine, too, was Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. You know, the quarterback and the coaching staff trumps everything, and as long as these guys are together and Tom Brady's looked like the same old Tom Brady in preseason so far, there's no reason to believe they're not winning 12, 13 games. I actually thought in his preseason game against the Eagles that he looked better this year than he did in the past few seasons. That's avocado ice cream, man. I guess that's what it is. I don't know. Him and Belichick are back in love again, according to Brady. Yeah. And maybe that has something to do with it. Certainly helps. Need to have a good, solid relationship between the coach and the quarterback. That's it. Yeah. How's that go again? Happy quarterback, happy life? Uh, yeah. That's a variation of what you're <laughs> what you're looking for. Did you guys just so. rank the Patriots as number one? We did. Yeah. We ranked them number one in the AFC. Jeannie B did not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's introduce our team real no, quick. No, it's okay. You don't Everybody. We got Andy Jardine little. here. Yo. We, my name's Ray Dunn, and uh, back on our sound and audio, we got Jeannie B back there. Hey, Jeannie B. Who would oh, you? And, and, and our sponsors real quick. Let's talk about our sponsors. Moose Light. Stuff scary good. I mean, this stuff scary good. Doyle's corporate image. Doyle's uh, right. Hats, shirts, jackets. Go see our buddies at Doyle's. And Andy, if your kitchen sucks, quit your bitch and fix your kitchen with some done right sauce. We done don't right have sauce. any here to show you right now, no, but uh, we need some bottles. We need some bottles. Yeah, get it right. over here. Let's go. All right, let's go to pick number two in the AFC. Um, this one here, I may surprise you with this one. Okay, what do you got? I think their defense is going to be lights out. Mm-hmm. If this quarterback can stay healthy, he is lightning. Lightning in a bottle. Lightning in a bottle. Houston Texans. Wow. Our, you did shock me with that. Um, I agree with your assessment of them. I just don't know that their defense and that lightning in a bottle quarterback, uh, you know, equals top two teams in the in the in the conference. But well, they uh, got a yeah. I mean the running back situation, they got Miller back there still. The 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 uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, yeah. I mean, th- this team could have a great year. I I I'm I really think Houston. Look out for Houston, everybody. I think they're going to have a fantastic year. Well, the tape is out on them. The tape is out on that quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who is coming off a, a knee injury, and we're we'll we'll see how he looks and how well he's moving around. JJ Watt also coming off of a big knee injury. Listen, if those guys rebound, they're going to be good, Ray. I, I can't good. give them top two good, but they're definitely going to be good. My number two team is going to bore you to death, and it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, the team is the, the off that crazy, crazy powerful offense that never even peaked last year is back again. Uh, offensive coordinator Todd Haley's gone, gone, so so we'll see what happens and if that has any impact on them at all. Though him and Ben weren't getting along anyway, so maybe no. it'll just make things better. This will be the best move for the Steelers is Haley being gone. Now. You think so? I do. I do think so. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Le'Veon Bell playing on that franchise tag seems a little more warm to the idea this year than he was last year. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, again, he has all the incentive to have a huge season. And the is that the best receiving core in, in the NFL? Do you think, I, right? It's absolutely. pretty close. Pretty it's, close. It's right up there. It's It's got to be. I don't know that their defense is going to be strong. And just like last year, I don't know if it's really going to have to be. So we'll see anyway. Number two, Pittsburgh Steelers. That's good. Um, number three for me. So there's been a lot of talk in the NFL about how the Jacksonville Jaguars should be in the top three. 
I just don't see it. No. I, I, I Their defense got lit up by New England. Um, even Pittsburgh put some points up against them. Um, I think you got to have a strong quarterback. And I, I'm sorry, I, just, I know Blake Bortles played well into the playoffs last year, but I just can't see Blake Bortles being the guy that, that, that makes a huge difference there. I've got Pittsburgh as my number three. Okay. But I got a runner up to these uh, LA Chargers as well. I think the Chargers, Chargers. could su- surprise some people this year as well. Well, let's just hope they don't have a string of five or six injuries in the next two weeks that completely deflates the season. Exactly. Which is what happens to them every year. Oh, and I don't know if that spoiled it or not, guys, as he, Ray went on a rant about the Jacksonville Jaguars staring at my computer screen. But yeah. No, I can't, I can't see it. I can't see All it. All right. So. Yeah. So number, number three, I do have Jacksonville. I do believe that the quarterback is the the most important thing. I do believe that they are they have an excellent 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 head coach who does nothing but good things in the NFL. Everywhere that he is, he's letting his players be themselves and they have an an insanely talented defense. I think that quarterback showed that he's not as bad as we really think he is in the playoffs and he and he's really good for that team right now. I think the Jags are the exception to the rule. They don't have an exceptional quarterback, but what they have there is good enough all around. And and head coach Doug Marone is 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 he's great. Like I mean, he's top five in the league in my eyes at the moment. And uh, yeah, I got the Jags number three in the AFC. There you go. Yep. Agree to disagree. Um, again, special shout out here to uh, possible top three is the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen. But let's move over to the yeah. NFC. They didn't quite make my honor roll mention <laughs> list, but yeah. Let's switch over to NFC. Um, I really struggled with this. I put a lot of thought into this, and okay. I still don't know if I've determined three top teams. Okay. Let's hear your first pick in the NFC. I'm going with the, the defending champion, Philadelphia Eagles. I have no reason to believe they're not the best team in the in the NFC. And all the word uh, on Carson Wentz is that he's going to be okay. He's going to be fine. Even if Nick Foles has to play for a couple of weeks, yeah, he's not looked great in, uh, in preseason. preseason. Who cares? He won the Super Bowl. He was the Super Bowl MVP. We know the guy can play and win games when it matters. So I think Philly set up great, best coaching staff in the league. Um, and uh, I'm very impressed. Now, they lost uh, DiFilippo, did they not, yes. to, to the Vikings. So, again, there's some coaching <clears throat> movement there, but I'm not worried about it. Philadelphia Eagles, number one. I mean, when in doubt, and I had a hard time with this too, right? You can always pick the defending champ, and nobody really argues with you. Yeah, not true. Yeah. But the one thing I know about Super Bowl champions, a lot of them have that slump after the, mm-hmm. the Super Bowl slump, Yep. which makes me a little bit concerned about the Eagles. Not only that, I don't know who's going to be starting quarterback for these guys. Right away. I yeah. don't know. And listen, Foles has not looked sharp. He scares the heck out of me right now, thinking that he's going to be starting week one. For that reason and that reason alone, I don't have them slotted at number one. And who do I put in at number one? I went with a team that a lot of other analysts have taken, and that's the L.A. Rams. I mean, again, you talk about good young coaches. This guy's one of the best young coaches there. Yeah. Yeah. He pulled a lot out of Jared Joff last year. Goff, yeah. Goff. Yeah. And they still have a lot of offensive weapons. Hey, I I admit I'm a name murderer, right? Yeah. But they still have a lot of offensive weapons, uh, and and they've got a huge defense too. Yeah, they're good. They're going to be a good team for sure. Uh, real quick with the Eagles. Listen, I think the best thing for the 2018 Eagles is the fact that the 2017 Eagles won the Super Bowl without Carson Wentz playing quarterback yeah. uh, in the end. I think that's going to motivate him so much. I think we're going to see a better Carson Wentz once he's back on the field this year. Just my prediction. On to my number two in the NFC. We don't even have to get more into it. The the Rams, absolutely. The coaching staff, all the personnel. Jared Goff has found his way Goff. in this team. Goff. Yeah, Goff. Yeah, Jared Goff. Yeah. His first name starts with a J, and you pronounced it like a J, and then his second name starts with a G, and yes, from time to time, it can be a soft G, but come on. <laughs> Usually you don't, uh, you default at the no-brainer. Anyway, <laughs> LA Rams are number two for me for sure. I I mean, well, I I'm think they're going to be really good. So. Guinea B. Guinea B. Guinea B. Yeah. 
Who's your uh, number two? All right, number two. Again, this is a real struggle for me. I want to put Philly in here. Yeah. But the only reason why I'm struggling with this is just because of everything I just told you about them in rank number one. Right. I'm going to put throw a surprise name out here for you. Okay. Now, th- again, Green Bay, Minnesota, both these teams could be in here. But a team that had that Super Bowl slump, and when you look at this roster, their roster is so good. I love Matty Ice Ryan, and I'm going to throw the Atlanta Falcons up in number two mm. in the NFC uh, heading into the season. Okay, I yeah, I mean I, they're definitely a top team. I don't, I don't. There's something about the Falcons, you know, and they are so boring. I and, know, and I don't understand. But look why at their they roster. Are. Yeah, like, their look, roster is. Look amazing. at their roster. Their roster is amazing. Their defense yeah. is fantastic. They had a bad year after that Super Bowl, um, yeah. and and you know they went through a coordinator change, uh, and I I think they'll pull it back together this year, mm-hmm. and uh, look for look for a big bounce back from Atlanta. Yeah, some of their key receivers that really helped them that Super Bowl run, like Taylor Gabriel, he's gone now, so we'll we'll see how it goes. I think they'll be good. Matt Ryan needs to be MVP. Matt Ryan, yeah. not what we saw last year. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, my number three, it it was really tough. Um, and yeah, the, like the, the, uh, the Falcons were in consideration, a bunch of teams were in consideration and I decided, you know what? The quarterback trumps everything. If you have a superstar quarterback, that's making everybody around him better. Um, that trumps everything. So Minnesota was a consideration, but I decided, you know what? I saw enough out of their new defense both personnel and coordinator in the in the preseason and just how good that that quarterback still is Ray and I may be shocking you but I'm going with the Green Bay Packers as the number three team in the NFC and it's the quarterback that that clinches that decision for me if we took the quarterback out of the out of the situation it would be like they wouldn't even be close the reason I couldn't go Vikings and I wanted to is because The two things that made the Vikings offense tick last year, offensive coordinator Pat Shermer and quarterback Case Keenum, are both gone. Yeah, Shermer's a head coach now in New York, and Keenum's in Denver. So we've got a brand-new quarterback in Kirk Cousins, who I like. I like Kirk yeah. Cousins. Yeah. And a new offensive coordinator, Filippo. It's Filippo, right? That's yes. in Minnesota, who's, yeah. who's an, an excellent offensive coordinator. But there's no telling whether or not they're going to gel the way Shermer and, and Keenum did. So I'm I'm going to Aaron Rodgers on this one. Green Bay. It's no money. Like, like last year I picked Green Bay to win – to win the NFC championship. Yeah. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers got injured. He's a big part of, you know, he's a big part of that team. They need him to be healthy this year in order for them to be that top three team. Yeah. Um, plus, there's tons of rumors circulating right now that Green Bay could be in the process of, of trading Clay Matthews and picks to uh, Oakland for Kalia Mack. Which would be shocking if it happens, but don't forget John Gruden's involved, so anything can happen here. If Kalia Mack comes, they could go to my number one spot very quickly, mm. very quickly. Um, I'm 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 t- I'm flip flopping between Minnesota and Green Bay here. And well, let, I, let me touch on the Mack thing before you give okay. us your pick. Okay. The reason I don't think it's likely. Good on Green Bay and their front office for changing their ways, right? They they never used to spend money in free agency. They never used to do anything to get their fans excited. They're a publicly owned company, the only publicly owned team, and the board of directors isn't really in it for the excitement right now on the field. They're in it for the long-term investment, right? But they went out, they got Jimmy Graham, and man, when, when Aaron Rodgers threw that touchdown to Jimmy Graham the other night in preseason, every Packers fan lost went their crazy. minds, absolutely yep. lost their minds. They went out and got J- Jimmy Graham. Problem is, is Aaron Rodgers needs to get paid. Yeah. And Aaron Rodgers isn't taking no Tom Brady discount. No. Aaron Rodgers is going to get paid. And the moment you pay a quarterback over $30 million a year, you're kind of hamstrung on that deal, the way the Seahawks are, the way all the teams that pay their quarterbacks are. Khalil Mack is going to get paid quarterback money. He's he's Von Miller. He's He needs quarterback money. He's going to be making over $20 million guaranteed per year. Can they can can the Aaron Rodgers contract and the Khalil Mack contract actually coexist for a few years with anything else on the team being around them? 
I don't think so. So I, though I praise them for changing their ways, I don't think they've changed that much. But, man, I'd be excited if Khalil Mack went to Green Bay. Well, if that happens, they're going up to number one for me. Fair enough. Um, but as for today, I'm going to take Green Bay as my third team. Strong mention to Minnesota with Kirk Cousins there. And I also am going to give a strong mention. They were right there for me, mm-hmm. is the New Orleans Saints. Saints, yeah. Drew Brees, um, we heard a great expression last night. Uh, last night, we were Jeannie is involved in a 12-girl fantasy football league this year being Ten. host. Ten? Ten. Ten chicks. Ten chicks in a, in a fantasy football pool for, for women this year. Tracy Lightfoot. Our good friend Tracy Lightfoot put that together, and I was helping Jeannie come up with team names last night, searching best team names for uh, women. Yeah. And what a great team name. Breeze Between the Knees. Breeze, Breeze Between the Knees. Breeze Between the Knees. <laughs> I thought it was great. So that is pretty good. Because of that, Drew Breeze is getting up in the top three of this. Um, so that's our top, top three AFC and NFC. I got one little discussion point for you. Let's do it. I heard this today on talk radio, and I find it very interesting. The new rules. All we're hearing about on on any NFL conversation right now are the new helmet rules. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What was the big discussion for a big part of a year prior to these new rules? The catch rule? No. The anthem. The anthem. Yes. That's all anybody's been talking about for the last year, maybe year and a half, is the anthem. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, these new helmet rules have come into place. Nobody's talking about the anthem anymore. Do you think, now this is really, this is out there, but do you think by any chance the NFL owners decided to put this rule in place to stir up some controversy to get people off the subject of the anthem the owners are meeting next week. They could easily flip it back to the way it was, get the season started, and everybody will still be talking about the anthem or about the helmet rule being changed, and we'll get into the 2018 season without any more talks about the anthem. What do you think? No, I, I don't think so. I think they had player safety in mind uh, 100% with this rule, and I think what they're doing is they're just letting it play out. So here's what I think is going on. People are still talking about the anthem, just not as much. Donald Trump tweeted at people after the first week of the preseason because the teams, again, the teams came out with this where, we're, you know, the NFL said it's going to be up to the team to have a policy for the anthem and it's up to them to find their players and so on and so forth. And none of that took effect in the preseason. So the players are doing what they want. Trump went at them. There still is chatter about it, but you're right, Ray. The new rule is dominating it. I, no, I don't think it was it was purposely done. I think this is going to play out like holding. You know, have you ever heard uh, you know officials say that you could, if you wanted to, call holding on every play, right? So, I think what's going on here is the referees are calling this new helmet rule to, right to the letter of the law in the preseason, and we're seeing the numbers. and And I heard on the Albert Beer podcast the other day, or uh, earlier today, I think there has been 54 calls or something so far. Uh, eight of them were, yes. eight, yeah, eight of them offensive, and then the rest on defense. And I think they're going to meet again. The competition committee is going to look at it, and it's going to turn into one of those things where you're going to see some plays that are right to the letter of the law that the refs are going to let go and just say it's kind of part of football. And I think they're just going to gradually find their way into that the way they have with holding because you can call holding. And so, no, I think it was 100% a safety move, and because it's a player safety move, I think there's no chance the owners just say, let's get this out of here. Okay. No. No. no, I think the NFL may be using the uh, referees as a scapegoat to uh, help uh, with the conversation on the anthem. Conspiracy. All right, that is uh, that is your NFL show. Now, I just want to bring you guys up to speed on something. We're going to have some interesting fun on our website this year. We have a head-to-head competition. Last year, we had a pick and pool, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll probably get... Are we going to have that pool again this year? Perhaps. If Perhaps. We, if we get some uh, some interest in it, though. You know, a lot of people were interested early last year and then just stopped plugging in their picks. So we're right. not, we're not listen, I'm not taking the time to put my picks in to beat nobody because a bunch of people stopped putting theirs in. Well, now you're going to get a chance to beat somebody because we <laughs> have Jamie Drisdale, which is, he's also known as the LeBron James of everything. Really, Andy. The everything. LeBron James of everything. LeBron James of everything. Nickname, That's yeah. quite a nickname. Yeah. But Jamie Drisdale. 
who is backed by Steve uh, Steve Fezzik. Now I don't even know who the Steve Fezzik guy is. I, I I've I, I've heard his name more in the last week then, you know, it, it's just crazy. But Jamie Drisdale, along with his buddy Steve Fezzik, are going to be taking on you and one of our other good friends of the show, Roger Nason. Right. And you guys are going to be making your top five picks against the spread every week. Yeah. Uh, and those will be posted on our site on Thursday nights. So if you guys are going to be playing Pro Line, you might want to come by and check out from these three guys, which – are, are apparently three of the top gambling minds in the city of Moncton uh, when it comes to uh, betting football games. Uh, yeah, I've never heard myself uh, uh, included in that, and I still wouldn't, but uh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to take on the LeBron James of everything uh, in a pick five against the spread. Uh, I hear Roger Nason's very, very smart with these things too. I'm in a pick five pool um, every year as well with like that are pretty high stakes, so uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot harder than you think, Ray. Oh, I can imagine. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, you're not picking all the games against the spread. You're just picking five. And but, but you know, in a lot of these pools, you don't even get a shot at the cash unless you get all five correct, and then you're sharing it with everyone else that did. And it's hard to get all five correct against yeah. the spread. The spread's a completely different game. So we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, I mean, I, I like that. LeBron is letting us know up front that he's cheating, that he's that he's paying <laughs> paying a professional website to feed him with spread information and so on and so forth. And we're going to see if him and uh, and his money uh, that he spent on uh, somebody to tell him how to make his picks can beat me and Roger Nason. So there you go. Yeah, that's our tease number two. He's number two. We have no idea how many teasers are going to be, but it, we're nope. going to have a normal show once the regular season We will starts. have a normal show, but that's tease number two, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next week. We'll catch you next week. Hey, if you didn't agree with our picks, and we know you don't, let us know. You, you know how to find us. Let us know.